we good? Hi, good morning everyone. To those watching from home, thank you for tuning in. My name is Diana Dominguez and I am the Multicultural Community Liaison with the Fayetteville Public Library under the Department of Community Engagement. Welcome to this Arabic calligraphy program at the Fayetteville Public Library. This class aims to cover the basics of Arabic calligraphy, giving an opportunity for the participants to experience a glimpse of this age-old art form. We will begin the program with a PowerPoint presentation by Dr. Shamir Abdin. After the presentation, the Arabic calligraphy demonstration will begin. But before we begin, I would like to introduce Dr. Shamir Abdin and his wife, Riaza Abdin. Dr. Shamir Abdin is a recent PhD graduate from the Department of Physics of the University of Arkansas. His area of expertise is in the field of astrophysics where he searches for observational evidence concerning theories on the origin and the nature of galaxy structures. He was born and raised in the beautiful island paradise of Sri Lanka. Art is something he enjoys doing during his leisure time and he loves experimenting with different art forms and media. He is interested in bringing back the rich old heritage of Islamic art, the elegance of the geomet geometrically precise Islamic patterns, and the beautiful Arabic calligraphy to a modern day context. Today he is also joined by his wife Riaza Abdin. Riaza is an early childhood educator by profession, born and raised in Sri Lanka. She is an artist who likes to use paper as a medium, and she does paper quilling artwork and loves to mix different media in her artwork. Thank you both for joining us today for this presentation. For the participants here with us today, I have placed a program evaluation at your table. We encourage you to fill it out and provide us feedback on today's library program. And for those who are watching us from home, if you would like to provide feedback or suggest a program, please email us at questions at faylib.org. The last thing that I would like to say or mention or know is that the bamboo pins that we have today were not only provided by Dr. Shamir, but they were also handmade. You will get to take home those homemade bamboo pins and the calligraphy sheets with you today. Thank you, Dr. Shamir. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And, uh, I'm really happy and honored to be here. Uh, we welcome you all for this wonderful workshop. And with, uh, with that said, let's begin. Well, introduction to Arabic calligraphy. Let's talk a little bit about the origin of Arabic calligraphy. Uh, the ancient Arab world was mainly built on a stro strong oral tradition. They always referred to memorize things and they really didn't, ha didn't have a requirement to write things down. We're talking about way back, back then, uh, pre-Islamic pre era. And then after the introduction of uh, Islam by, by Prophet Muhammad uh, this became a more important task to preserve the Quran. So initially, this started as a, a way of uh, preserving the Holy Quran. And however, after time, after uh, decades, uh, this became a part of uh, art, design, and architecture. So this art form that we are trying to learn today, it's uh, nearly 2,000 years old. And it's an uh, art form that is practiced and remains as vibrant as it is. It was back then. Arabic calligraphy evolved over time. Uh, basically, uh, there are two distinct families of uh, Arabic calligraphy. The Kufic scripts were the first to be developed, and then the cursive script. The Kufic script uh, was mainly, as I said before, uh, used to preserve the Quran, to write uh, the holy script. And since this was uh, a holy script, the people who wrote down things, they wanted to make it as beautiful as possible. So initial Kufic script, uh, there were not very many rules associated with it. So the artists, they had a lot of free uh, area to work with. And all these letters have a lot of wonderful uh, floral things and a lot of beauty is there. And the artists them, themselves had the authority to 
work with their own imagination. So Kofik was the first form of calligraphy that was developed, and you can see a variety of uh, artifacts uh, made with this art form. Well, after that, with the progress of time, uh, as the Islamic, uh, the empire uh, went throughout the globe, there was more requirement of coming up with a script that was easy to write, uh, probably suitable for documentation purposes. And then that gave the birth for the cursive scripts. As you can see in the Kofic scripts, most of them are uh, rectilinear, the, the letters are more rigid. It's very difficult to write these things. Here, when it comes to cursive scripts, mainly since paper was used, uh, sometimes papers, there are lines on papers, papyrus, old papyrus papers, there are lines, and straight edges are a little bit difficult to write with old papyrus papers because ink would blot in. Therefore, letters were, were it's, it was necessary to make the letters curve. And that gave birth to the traditional cursive scripts. There are about six main uh, styles that were developed back then. Uh, the Nashk, Tulot, Mohakak, Raihani, Rika, and Tawaki. And there are many more. Uh, Diwani is another script. And these are considered as the uh, six main classical traditional uh, scripts. These are known as Aklam el Sitta, the six main traditional uh, styles. Today we'll try to learn a little bit about the Tulut script. It's a wonderful script. Uh, it was developed uh, long ago and there's a lot of geometry in it. There's a lot of uh, uh, beauty in it. Here, the first picture over here, that's the Quran written in uh, Naqs. And then the second one is Tulut script. Okay, so the material that we need. Of course, a pen we call a kalam in, in Arabic. The pen is known as a kalam. Traditionally, calligraphers used uh, uh, karmish pens. They are made out of a reed, a specific reed grown on riverbeds. Uh, bamboo, again, is a very popular uh, media that is used. And also, there are different kinds of pen that, pens that were developed over the years. Java pens, handum pens, silai, those are some examples. So today we'll try to use bamboo. So the requirement for this is to have a rigid tip. The tip should be strong, it should be properly uh, cut. So that's something required, and bamboo is wonderful for that. Paper. Traditionally, calligraphers use a, used a paper called ahar. It's even used today. Uh, handmade paper coated with starch and uh, sizzling made from alum and egg uh, whites. So that's quite interesting. It's a bit difficult to buy those now, but you can buy them online. There are links available for that as well. Uh, today, we'll try to explore two different kinds of paper, uh, the calligraphy paper that's, that can be bought here. And also, let's try to use a gloss paper. It's sometimes easy to write things in the gloss paper, especially when we are learning calligraphy. Uh, just the flow is easy. In the calligraphy paper, the traditional calligraphy paper that we can buy here, sometimes you'll have to dip more times, you know, just because it absorbs the ink. The ahar paper that was used by the calligraphers, uh, it's quite interesting as well. It has a gloss finish as well. Uh, because of that, they can uh, sometimes erase things uh, if there were mistakes. Ink, we'll use black Indian ink, uh, again available uh, through Amazon or you can buy it through any uh, art supply shop. Ink well, we also have this uh, small ink well. Let me show these. Well, this is an ink well that Traditionally, people used uh, silk um, here. Uh, the whole purpose of having this is to uh, mix the ink and water uh, to dilute the ink a little bit and also to preserve the ink. 
So it's easy not to have a lot of ink. This will have the right amount of ink always available. So that's all that you would need to write things. And also, it would be easy to have, is, it would be nice to have a small knife and a piece of wood, uh, just in case if you want to sharpen the edge uh, of these pens. Okay, so that's all we need. Uh, we'll try to mix this a little bit later, but let's try to go through some more details and then walk. Yes, please. Tap water would be fine, just water is fine. Okay. So a little bit about the Toluth script, that's what we are going to go through today. Uh, the word Toluth stands for one third in Arabic. There are different uh, explanations for this. Uh, one popular explanation is that in, in all the letters, uh, sometimes the, sh the thin areas are about one third of the thick areas. That's one way of, uh, one explanation. And this was originally developed in the 7th century during the Umayyad density, uh, dynasty and then further refined during the Abbasi and the Ottoman. And it was uh, the golden era was basically uh, during the calligrapher Ibn Mukhala, uh, Ibn Mukhla, I believe, in Baghdad, Iraq, when Baghdad was the uh, capital of the uh, empire. And uh, during that time, again, he, he was mainly the person who was... Uh, who came up with the rules regarding the Tulut script. In the Tulut script, the nukta or the dot plays, the, plays a vital role. That defines the scale of the entire letters. So this, the first letter in Arabic, that's alif. Alif is written with ideally eight nuktas. So this is a scale. Now, as you may you, you will find in few slides ahead or when we start writing, this dot, it's a measurement of your, the tip of the pen that we are using. So everything has to do with the size of the nib and then that defines the nukta and that defines the scale of the entire uh, alphabet that we are writing. So we start with the dot and then we drop, draw things. Uh, Alif is the first letter. We'll, we'll, we'll go on there. Okay, so this is the Arabic alphabet. There are 28 letters in the Arabic uh, alphabet, and Arabic is written from uh, right to left. Uh, these are beautiful letters, aren't they? Okay, so is it necessary to, is it necessary to know Arabic in order to write this? Not exactly. I mean, I can read Arabic, I can write Arabic, but uh, I don't understand much of Arabic because we are originally from Sri Lanka. Uh, that's how it is. Okay, so we can learn and appreciate this art form just by looking and learning. Uh, so 28 letters, but if you count, there are 29. Well, this letter, Hamza, it's not a part of the main 28 letters, but we also use that. Uh, to aid reading, and that's that's also a part when we learn the Arabic calligraphy style. And let's let's try to look at this in detail. Although there are twenty eight, uh, there are actually very less number of letters that you should learn to write, because look at these three letters, ba ta za. So this is a ba ta za, and all these three letters are almost the same. It's just differed by these dots. So if you can write this properly, putting dots is easy. And this is jim ha, and all these ha, all these are again the same. So once you know a little bit, 
it's just easy to add things here and there. So basically, there are only about 19 letter forms. They simply differ by the number of uh, dots that you add here and there. Of course, there are more, much more rules that are associated with this. There are some, uh, some ways that things can be written. Say, the letter Alif. Uh, it's always usually written at the beginning or at the end. Uh, the letter dal again, letter vow again, that's an ending letter, which means it can only be joined from uh, the right hand side, but it cannot be joined from the left hand side. So there are subtle ru rules just like that, uh, but you will come to know them uh, later. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the letter vow is this letter oh okay let's see okay yeah so the letter wow over there I was talking about that uh, that's uh, a letter that only can be joined from your right hand side but not from the left hand side sorry Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So let me show this again. This is the Arabic uh, alphabet, as we know. And I was talking about few letters that only can be joined from the right hand side. So Alif is, uh, so Wow is an example. It can only be joined from the right hand side it cannot be connected from the left hand side that's the ending letter dal is again an ending letter the rest the majority can be joined from both the right hand side and the left hand side so you will learn about that later i mean once you learn about the letters properly as time goes by you can learn about those and also uh, there are multiple ways of writing each letter the letter meme can be written in different ways. Uh, all these letters, ha, ha, all these letters can be written multiple ways. But let's try to focus on the very basic today. Let's try to get, get hold of some letters that later you can learn in detail. Okay, so that's that. Now, is Tulut a font? Not exactly. I mean, we are, we are comfortable with the idea of a font, right? In Microsoft Word, we use uh, uh, Times New Roman. But those fonts are quite rigid, right? You can't change things. A is A. I mean, you can chop off part of A, but the, the beauty of Microsoft, I mean, Times New Roman, Roman lettering, if A is written, it should be written in a proper way. But here, there are rules, and also the calligrapher has some freedom as well. And there are multiple ways a letter can be written, and that gives the beauty of, of Arabic calligraphy. It's more like a design system where you have the authority, as well as there are some rules that, that makes it uniform. That's how it is. With that said, I think we can move on to... Yes, so each dot uh, defines a letter. So this is... A leaf, this is ba. Ba is with the dot at the bottom, and this is pronounced ta. So two dots on the top, that's a totally different letter. So this is sheen, seen, sheen. So different dots uh, actually define different letters. It's quite interesting. Okay, with that said, I think we can move on to our first letter. Let's try, try writing this. And let's try to prepare the ink first and then start writing. Okay, so we have our ink and this is the liquor. 
we have used wool ideally it is said the ratio between ink and water should be two to one let's add a little bit of ink and add a little bit of water it totally depends on the consistent consist consistency that you want be careful while pouring the ink it might be messy sometimes so try your best to stay within the focus area little bit of water would be fine it's difficult to get the ratio precisely but it's a trial and error let's put water and see how it comes uh, start with the pen that has uh, a little bit of thick nib Two parts ink, one part water. So let's start using the thick nib pen first. I think we have provided two kinds of paper. Let's start with the gloss first. It's easy to work with the gloss and then we'll try to okay. the way you hold the pen, uh, the chopped off part should be facing down. I, I forgot to ask, are there anyone who is writing from left hand? No, everyone is right-handed. That's wonderful. Uh, as you can see, this this point is uh, about 45 degrees or, uh, or rather 30 degrees chopped. That's necessary for Arabic calligraphy. Most of the uh, bamboo pens that are available online are actually straightly chopped off. So we need this slight uh, slant in the nib. Let's try drawing a dot first. So try to draw a dot first and the dot should be a square at the end. Uh, make sure you have the chopped part the uh, facing down just like this and then let's try to draw some dots try to make it as square as possible and if possible let's try to draw eight dots in a line Okay, and now let's try to draw the letter a leaf. The letter a leaf is drawn with a slight slant. It's not perfectly straight. Then we call this the zulfa or the hit there, there's a small line that goes on the top. So roughly about eight dots down, that's a leaf. Try to write as much as possible. It's not perfectly s straight. And let me go around the classroom just to make sure everyone is doing it correctly yeah I'll do that it's okay
that and close out of it. And then open it up so I can read it. Yes. So that's how a leaf is written. Eight nuktas down, and then the zulfa is about uh, 1.5 units long. Uh, let me check if you are holding the pen correctly. Yeah, perfect. That's fine. Okay. The nukta should be a small, quick uh, motion. Mm -hmm. I mean the the zulfa. Uh, make sure the entire nib is uh, uh, touching the surface. When it comes down, the entire nib should touch the surface, falls down. Let me draw over here. Give me a second. So these are a little bit spaced more. are fine. No, make sure the entire nib is uh, touching the surface. Let me so let's start from here. The surface should should be slightly slanted. Then good. Ah, that's wonderful. Are you all enjoying this? <laughs> ah, so let's try to draw the nukta again. Uh, I would put some more ink. Let's mix this. Okay. And that's the dot. More ink. Let's take time with Alif. It's totally fine. It, it's extremely necessary to get the Alif correct before moving on to other letters. Oh, no, use the other tape. That's better. That's fine. Then the entire surface should be touching. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Yes. So sorry. Oh, it's okay. Make sure there's no space in between. Mm, okay. It should be touching. You can add some more ink if necessary. Oh, I think that will be fine too. And then this should be. Yeah. Ideally, they should be straight one lines. Each stroke should be uh, done precisely once. Yeah, so let's draw the Zulfa again.
a drawing let's try to keep this straight it's not perfectly vertical there should be a slight slant and then keep the nib over there small stroke like that The eight nuktas, they are mainly to guide. It's not necessary to be perfect, but that's a rough scale. And that's how you draw a leaf. It is said that uh, uh, to train a proper calligrapher, it takes roughly about 20 years. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, it is interesting, um, this is an age-old art form, uh, and I believe in some parts of the world, uh, in Turkey, I, I watched a documentary in, about uh, art calligraphers in Turkey. It is said that uh, uh, the, the, the heritage, I mean the lineage of master student, that entire hi history, has been preserved all the way up to about, I mean, from the beginning of, uh, of the art form. So up to now we have master and student, that entire lineage written, recorded uh, over there. Is that okay? Just take your time, just make sure you have the alif properly. And once you touch, uh, once you have the stroke going on, don't change the stroke. Okay. I've given a small worksheet sort of a thing where you can go home and practice just by looking at these noctas. Okay, shall we move on to Ba, the second letter? I'll try to go a little bit uh, fast, but we'll see how it goes. That's the second letter of the alphabet. Little bit complicated, but nothing to worry. Uh, it has about three, six nuktas uh, width, two nuktas for this change, this uh, curve, and then goes all the way, two nuktas roughly over there, and this should ideally be a circle over there. As you can see, the, st the starting point and the ending point, they are not the same. There is a small difference, about a half nukta down, and that's letter ba. Uh, again, uh, once you know this art, this uh, shape, you can write multiple letters. Ba, ta, the, all are of the same form. Uh, so don't worry uh, much about this. Let's try to get as as much as possible. <laughs> so try to draw those nuktas first uh, and then just to get a rough idea. Oh yeah, sorry. That's a bar that I wrote. Uh, so let's draw that again.
make sure you have enough ink in it ideally there should be about six nuptas it's more than that over there that should do so the starting point and the ending point they're not the same that's but it's too much It's very difficult to get all the bars the uh, same as possible, but that's the idea. You must practice, practice. So the size of the nib, that defines the scale of the letter. So I'm using a small uh, nib pen over here. Okay, that's too much ink. One side thick, one side thin in the letter bar. That's bar. And that's ta actually. With two nuktas. And then that's the. Might be a little bit flat. I mean, we should get it more curved. That's that's more likely. It's Something like that, I would say. A little bit more. Yeah, it's a very small one, ideally for harakat. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's good. Uh, this is a little bit more flat. This is more like to the scale, but uh, this this should be a little bit smaller. This seems to be the scale. This little bit uh, flat. Let me try to draw there. Okay. okay. This is so interesting. The 
this one before Thank this. Thank you so much for doing that. Ah, you're yeah, welcome. <laughs> oh, these are good. This would be my best bar. And then uh, these are a little bit short. Let me try to draw two. Should have enough ink. Uh, if not, it will. That will happen. <laughs> and that's the. That's the. Actually, three letters. <laughs> ah, that's nice. That's nice. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're good. That's good. Ah, that's fine. Draw one too, just to make sure. A little bit less than that, ideally six nuptas that way. And then that's bar, and that's ta, that's. It's actually three letters. Yeah, you are getting there. You are getting there. No worries. Okay, let's let's check this again. So the entire nib should touch. Going down a bit, turning all the way. Little bit less than that, and that's letter bar. Once you have two dots there on top, that's letter ta, and then that's letter ta. So actually, three letters, the same shape. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's fine. <laughs> I've been practicing for a while. I think you guys should have enough papers, so play around. Let's try using another paper. Let's try to use uh, the calligraphy paper as well, so that you have a feeling how the texture change. Uh, I like to write on this paper uh, horizontally. You may see there are lines uh, that go horizontally so you can use that to get a idea so keep it landscape and then we can just check how things change when we move from paper to paper so that's a leaf Feel free to use any uh, paper that you're comfortable with. As you can see, it's sometimes difficult to keep the entire ink throughout the letter. That's fine. Sometimes that gives a little bit of character.
wants to go. Let's start, let's keep on working with the gloss paper for now. move on to few more letters and then we'll see uh, what can we do what can be done later Getting a little bit complicated, one by one. That's Dal and Ra. Uh, roughly three nuktas that way. About one, two, three, four, five nuktas all the way down. Small curve. There's a zulfa over there, and then that's them. Now again, this same curve is used uh, in few letters. Same with uh, the Ra, the same curve is used in few letters. Let's start with Dal. Uh, just try to get a picture of this, try to note this, what's happening over here, and then let's try to write Dal. Okay. That's how it's written, and then let's check the it's a bit more curved. That's raw. Everything starts from the right hand side. Look how the uh, the thickness change. That's a little bit thick over there. And then it's thin over there. much but keep practicing I'll have this and raw. Oh yeah, that, that helps. Start with this. Mm, that's fine. Uh, the zone part should be a little bit less than that. Um, that looks like a good one. That's, uh, this part should be more horizontal, I mean more a straight line. Then like that. 
straight over there. That's a bit too much too. <laughs> straight over there, then the curve. It's a bit too much again. Oh, that's good. This should be more straight, mm -hmm. and then the curve. Okay. Sorry. Okay. My bad. Yeah. Hurrah. <laughs> <Why are you? laughs> and this again starts over there. See, I want to start over here. Oh, that. we write it oh. from that's it. So yes. right to left. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> no worries. So this sh this is good. This should be a little bit more there. So let's let's go through that. This should be a little bit more this way. So, going down a bit, almost straight. And then the curve, oh, that's too much ink. So okay, that makes sense. Yeah, a little bit straight, and then the ink, then the, no, the, I mean the zulfa. Oh, that's perfect. That's good. That's good. Oh, well, that's good. Make sure this is a little bit curved, but that's fine. This is wonderful. Going down, almost straight, and then the curve. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so bring this down. So it's not like letter J? Not exactly. Okay. This, this part should be more straight. Good. Uh, this curve should be a little bit more straight. Mm, that's fine. That's fine. This is fine. And rough. That's perfect. Uh, this curve is better. Neat. 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 Those who are online, uh, you might be wondering why we are stopping here and there. Just I'm going around the classroom. Uh, so I hope you guys are trying this as well. Uh, try. Uh, of course, you'll need the supplies, but uh, uh, you can buy them and you can just buy a bamboo, uh, uh, some bamboo from uh, local hardware and you can have it arranged and you can start, start practicing. Okay. We 
have time until 11.15, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to one more letter and then I'll, tra I'll tell what we can do later. Okay, a little bit more complicated scene. Uh, so I'll, we can, I will provide this uh, presentation slides uh, so that you can look at this. And these are available online as well. You can just Google for Arabic calligraphy guides. Uh, I'm sure the library might have some books as well. So, so with that said, let's try to write a scene and then we'll see. So this is a process where you should go linearly. You should go one by one, all the letters. Once you have all the letters done, then we actually try to combine letters. We write two letters together. Starting with each letter, say the letter Alif, you try to combine Alif with all the other letters. Ba with all the other letters. That's the second step. So we are still here. Let's get a new paper for that. Keep on practicing. So that's a better sheen. Uh, look at the places where it gets thick and thin. The initial first loop is a little bit small. The second loop is going that way a bit, coming down, all the way like that. The starting point of this and the, I mean, the starting and the ending points are not the same. Ah, that's cool. That's good. 
this side should be a little bit that way. So there is, it's not the same. No, this side. Yeah, this is more better. Interval. Yeah, interval. Interval should be a little bit that way. Perfect. This is perfect, uh, should stop around there, and this should go over there. This is more correct. <laughs> so this is not the same direction. should be smaller than that so let's try that this is perfect this is perfect yeah this is not so good this is this way okay and there let's see so a little bit that way mm -hmm. almost like straight and then you curve a bit That's cool. This is the scale is good. Uh, it would be wise to use these. To, uh, yeah, <laughs> because uh, sometimes it's difficult to maintain the ink over there. That. This goes a little bit that way, and almost straight. Then you get the curve over there. Stop it there. Sorry, sorry, that happens. That's wonderful. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. So yeah. this is okay. This one's a little bit. This one's bigger. Yes. Okay. And then this should be a little bit more, a little bit straight. I mean. Come out of this part. Here. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So this should be a little bit slanted. One way. Mm -hmm. Almost straight. Sorry, I ran out of ink. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's wonderful. Put a little bit on that. And this is a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. Slide. Then come down. Then a small curve. Okay. This is almost a almost little bit straight. So 
that's the letter seen. Uh, once you know this, uh, you should be able to draw sheen as well. Okay, try practicing. This takes time. This is all about patience and practicing. Uh, let's keep these for now and let me show something again interesting. This is another letter. Uh, each letter should be studied, each letter should be practiced, and it takes time. Now, I, since I, I mentioned this before, uh, this is not just a font. There's, there's consistency in each letter. The curve that you use for s uh, the scene letter, it's present in most of the letters. Once you get one curve correctly, you would be able to get most of the letters correctly. So this same curve, it's known as the Kosh curve, it's visible in seen, sheen, kaf, ya, la, sad, lad, noon. It's the same thing. So we were talking about this particular curve. No. It's visible in all the letters. So this, this is the reason uh, we get Arabic calligraphy more beautiful. You see the same curves everywhere. So let's practice this. Uh, I mean, try to practice this at home as much as possible. It will take time. Once you are okay with that, this would be the next step. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It's totally fine. It's a little bit scary. Yeah. So what we have done over here is uh, the same letter bar is being mixed with all the other letters. So this is ba and alif together. You practice the first letter is ba and alif together. Oh, I'm bad at this. That's ba and then that's alif. So practice these together. This is ba and ba. The next one is ba and ba, ba and ta. Uh, so that goes with the entire alphabet. Start with each letter, try to match that with the other letters, and that's how you practice. It takes time, <laughs> but that's how it is. That's why it takes 20 years. <laughs> okay, for today, let's try to write this word, ikra. That's actually the first letter that was revealed uh, in the Holy Quran. Uh, the meaning of this word is read. So I thought it is appropriate since we are in a library. Okay, so let's try to get uh, alif, ikra, all together. Kaf, ra, the curve is there, and alif, and there's a hamza. Let me draw. This is curve and Hua together. You can use the uh, the pen with a small nib to write these harakat the uh, these are the letters these things that we write at the bottom or the top that defines how you pronounce it the letter a is sounded a but by adding this line over there we make it e so ikra and then this is k we make this ik right in that These are sufficient to 
pronounce this? Ikra. Uh, these are harakats and these are like mandatory ones in order to get this right. Uh, but for native Arabic speakers, just the letters itself is sufficient for them to understand what's the word, what the word is. And then you can also add these. These are for decorative purposes. There are some mandatory ones. There are some for to make uh, easy to understand. And there are some for pure decoration. That's Ikra. Uh, no, it's just uh, for native speakers, they can definitely, by looking at it, they know what's the word. Just it's easy for people like us who are not native Arab speakers to read it properly. Sorry? Oh, this. So, yeah. This is just that. I used a small pen, maybe, then that. So, that's Hamza. Let's try to write Ikra again. is calf and ra together that's that's what's a little bit tricky over there going down so if there's not enough ink you will end up with that Ideally, these should be same length, same angle throughout. It's a bit tough sometimes. So it's mandatory harakats, and then you add. With that, uh, we may have to conclude based on the time constraints, but I urge you to practice uh, right things. It's a process that will take time. It's, that's how it is. Uh, and keep on practicing. I'll leave the word ikra on the screen so you can try. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. One stroke. I mean, there are uh, in some letters you can stop at in the middle. That's fine, but uh, it should look like one slow. Now I'll leave. Uh, the, the vertical line, that's one. And then for the Zulfa, you'll have to do another stroke. Uh, but some letters you have to join, keep on moving. During one letter? Uh, no, I mean, what do you mean by change the? Mm -hmm. Uh, ideally, we try to use the single pen. 
single pen and then stop if, if, if it's necessary and then continue. Yeah, so uh, let me show how you read that. Uh, so this is a, uh, with this line, we make it e, k, with this it makes ik, ik. This is ra, we wrote this letter ra, so k and ra together, ik, ra, and that's another alif to make it ra, ikra, read. So learning Arabic, that's a totally different <laughs> lesson. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, that, that's something that I wrote today in the morning before I came here. Let me show that too. Thank you to everyone who is watching us from home, and thank you to those who also registered for today's program. Again, I would like to um, let you all ask that you please fill out those program evaluations that we have there, um, and you can leave those there. The uh, calligraphy sheets and the boo bamboo pins you can take with you. Um, and for those that are watching us from home, although you do not have a program evaluation in front of you, please be sure um, to email us at questions at faylib.org if you would be interested in more programming like this or if you also have any programming suggestions for us. I would like to give a huge thank you to Dr. Ashami Abdin and Riaza, his wife, if we can please give them an applause for coming out today. Thank you so much. Any last comments that you would like to make, Dr. Shamir? Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. I hope you enjoyed and learned, and I, I urge you to try practicing this. This is a beautiful art form that, uh, that has been there for the last 2,000 years, and I hope it will continue. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And this is Assalamu Alaikum, which means may peace be upon you. The reply is wa alaikum salam. <laughs>